Allez. OK, so uh, welcome back to our afternoon uh, speech. Uh, I have uh, two Italians with me. I'm really happy to have them with me. I have uh, Nicolo Renna and Mattia Camboni. Say, say, hello, say hi, say hello. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. Ciao a tutti. OK, um, you guys, it's OK. We talk in English and uh, you reply. Yeah, we try in English. <laughs> <laughs> no, dai, non fateci fare brutta figura. I say don't. Uh, Italians, all Italians speak uh, very well English. Uh, yeah, so um, Nicolò and Mattia, is the first time in Brest for you? No, uh, it's the second time in Brest here. We come here, uh, well, oh, for me, World Championship uh, six years ago, ah. the Techno. Ah, okay, so you know a little bit the place I how... I don't remember really well <laughs> because I was really young. Okay. So, I don't know, Mattia... Mattia, Mattia? I don't remember the match, it was like nine years ago. So ah, okay, okay, what yeah, badge is? Really, okay. really long time for both. Okay, so um, let me give you some uh, uh, details about uh, Mattia and Nicolò. Mattia, you've been to two Olympic Games, Rio de Janeiro and uh, uh, Tokyo. So how was, uh, you, you can get a little bit closer with the yeah. microphone, how was your experience at the Olympic Games? Uh, how was your result and your experience? And, result uh, was Okay, I would say okay, like not too bad, not too good, like but especially the last one. But the last one, the medal was there, and then yeah, it just yeah. what happened? I yeah, what happened? Uh, <laughs> early start, you know, sometimes. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the medal, in moment. the medal race, yeah, eh? Yes, it was moment. And and everybody said you were miles ahead, like. It was my like was the perfect condition of the wind, like it was. I couldn't ask for better. <laughs> <laughs> it's wind, okay. But that's the life. It's but you are done with it. You don't think about yes, it yes. anymore. Now I laugh. Before I was crying. Now I laugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, Nicolò, you are your goal is to go to the Olympic Games. Yeah, I think you, I you have to. You go. want you want to go to Marseille. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you did good results. Tell us your best results this year. Yeah, this year for me was a was a good year. Uh, I did uh, second in the European Championship. And also a uh, second place in Palma for the World Cup. Yeah. So I'm really great with uh, with this year. Let's try to finish good. Also, yeah. yeah. Gonna be hard, but we we like. Okay. So, um, Nicolò, I know you since you were a little kid because I know your father. I work with your father. He has a windsurfing center since ages on Lake Garda. You are a whole windsurfing windsurfing family. So. It, for you, it was almost obvious to be a windsurfer. Yeah, I mean. for sure. I <laughs> burn in uh, in the board. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was uh, in Garda. If you don't do windsurfing, uh, there is anything else to do. <laughs> Maybe or biking sailing, a little bike, big or so. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, my dad had the school, so I, every, I was every day there and see everybody was going outside. And so uh, when I start, uh, I don't finish. And uh, Mattia, what is your background? Where, where did where did you learn, and why did you get addicted to windsurfing? That was pretty the same of Nicolò. We were I, I used to go with the, also another guy, Daniele Benedetti, another yes. Italian guy, yes. uh, to a sailing club. We yes. Let, let's say you are from the Rome area. Yeah. Yes. Close to Rome, Civita Vecchia. Civita Vecchia, yes. And yeah, we saw every day many guys going uh, out with the windsurf. I say I want to try. <laughs> and the first time I tried, I say okay, I love this sport. And it started like, I think, uh, like for everyone, like a joke. And then uh, luckily it became uh, a work. And yes, and uh, so yeah. now we, you still continue. Are, I feel uh, so lucky for this, yeah. And tell me, how difficult was it for you to change from Aero 6 to, to IQ Foil? It's not worse. <laughs> it is, it is, it's not worse. <laughs> it, is. it is still, okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, the main, the, the hardest thing was to grow with the weight, like to gain weight. Yes. Uh, I almost gained 20 kilos, and uh, so hard. So yeah. Hard. This this morning I had Kieran here, yeah. obviously, and Kieran told me that uh, during uh, Rio, uh, during Tokyo, his was weight was 73, and he knew that that the right RSX weight is between 70 and 75, and he put on some weight now. Yeah. Obviously, for but for IQ, tall, for. so it's easier, you know. When you are so tall, yeah, I, I he also said that's not his natural weight. He yeah. put his weight yeah, because for R6 same. he had to put the weight yes. below his limits, yes. and now he nice. feels more natural when he's doing IQ foil. And for you, how much are you now? I was 69. Now I'm 87, 88. Wow, so, yes. <laughs> so that that's, that's a big thing. And what what about you, uh, Nicolo? You you uh, about the same weight? Yeah, for me it was the same. I finished also R6. Uh, 
one year before him because the, for the Olympic they make one year uh, later. And yeah, I was 72 and now I'm 86, 87. Wow. So it was also for me. Uh, so and uh, I'm not tall. So so, so your uh, parents are not complaining. It's more expensive now. Yeah. You eat so much. <laughs> more, much more. <laughs> you, much the more pasta food. is more. Yeah. <laughs> everything every, more everything is more. Okay, so let's talk about uh, this uh, this event. Um, there seems to be two things that are quite challenging here. Is one is the current because you know we are connected to the Atlantic, so we have currents going in, going out. It depends on incoming, outgoing tide. And we heard there might be some problem with some algae, the the seaweed. So this can be a factor. Yeah, I think uh, the worst problem is the is the seaweed because we for the current uh, with the foil is not really really important because we are going really fast. The problem is the seaweed, but they, they are there for everybody. So one time maybe I take it. I one time take uh, Matthias take. One time, one time <laughs> Luke also yeah, take. Exactly. Maybe yeah. One, one time. Yeah, Luke will come next. He's here standing. <laughs> Luke from New Zealand. He will be our next guest. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So the seaweed you mean is the same for everybody. You cannot uh, blame a world championship. Oh, I got seaweed or not? It's a little bit the same risk for everybody. I don't know. It depends also when you take. You know, which yeah. I, but I have to say, I also fall with seaweed. You have the advantage with the fall. You yeah. see it better because you're high. Yeah. So you still can try to avoid it. Obviously, if it's like a big sometimes you have like big chunks and then it's more difficult yeah. someone that you can jump or like you can fly more high and they're going away but uh, okay someone they, okay okay they don't away. and um we can say that the you and mattia you're coming from the two main iq foil points in italy one is lago di garda and the other one is civita vecchia eh? you confirm that lago di garda is the perfect training spot for iq foil yeah, the Garda is the best training spot for sailing, windsurfing. Maybe he says Chivita Vecchia, but we will see. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you can do much more hours uh, in Garda. I think so, but yes. But the, the problem is you don't have a lot of wave and the water uh, have salt. So, yeah. no, I don't have salt. But you feel the difference between yeah. sweet and salt yeah, water? Yeah. We have what, what, what is the difference? Uh, like, uh, you feel the flotation? Uh, yeah, water? you have a little bit more power. Uh, year and uh, so it's ah it's, that's it's interesting different. ah you feel you feel the difference yeah, okay feel. so okay. it's not so good training too much in the lake because then but you, you think here. also there is little uh, setup differences in yeah. the lake uh, in the same wind you tune a little different yeah uh, I come I was I was in Garda I was training with one setup and then I come here I was not super fast if the beginning so I have to change ah okay all my, not all that, my setup but something that, that's interesting. And, for improve. Okay, and and Mattia, uh, what about you, Civita Vecchia? I mean, I don't live. I live south of Roma, so I know the Lazio is a very good region. Uh, for sure, in the summer they have probably the better thermic winds that we have, but still, Civita Vecchia is uh, there is a lot of uh, training there, and it's a very uh, uh, how can I say very professional setup, uh, and yeah, it, the, the, it's it can it's be so good like October, November, December. Uh, Maybe more than Le Garda because it has to be cold and maybe you have wind all in the morning. Yeah. And Chidavecchia can be still warm and you have some wave, so yeah. can be better on that period. Yeah. But yes, from January it starts to be cold, so better to move Lanzarote. Lanzarote. And Lanzarote is so good. We okay. Here, yeah, so I know. So you go, you are going to go to Lanzarote too because um, uh, Kieran, he was here this morning. You know, he has a little injury in the elbow. And uh, he said that the doctors told him it's better he rests for 10 days, but he will then go also to Lanzarote. So Lanzarote is a good event. Uh, uh, last year also, I think you guys had a good good time there. Yeah, so was, good. Was, so was, good. Was like 25 degrees on February. Yeah. I still remember a session with the shorts on February. Yeah, yeah I know. So, that. Yeah, so, and windy every day. So yeah, that's, okay, that's so good. good. So, Okay, so guys, I make you last question. Uh, Nicola first. Uh, what are your expectations for this World Championship? Uh, it's really hard to say because uh, we are a lot, a lot of competitor guys. So the the good things is to do a top ten. Top ten yeah. is the, the to goal. enter in the in the medal race and then uh, then see what happens. Then see what happens. And uh, do, do you have a what is your favorite wind? What is the wind range you like the best? I'm I think competitive with every wind. Every wind. But I like more. Uh, the let's say more wind. on the stronger than the more lighter than the side. You the prefer more, let's say the 15, 18 rather than the 8, uh, 10. 8 plus, I uh, like more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you, Mattia, what about you? Uh, my goal, I not like Nicolò. <laughs> uh, top 30, I will be so happy. Uh, it's going to be so hard. Level is high, I know. It's going to be so hard because the level is so high and we are a lot. 160 competitors, so it's going to be so hard. But 
we work a lot this summer for this competition, so I will do my best and I will stay focused all the week. Okay, that's cool. So uh, maybe we get Luke here. Uh, you know Luke also very well. Luke and uh, Lilian, Luke. Here he's coming. We welcome him here, and then we we say hi and we change and look and the, so so Luke is coming now and uh, and Lillian, uh, uh, the girls, yeah yeah guys. So uh, you 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 seen Luke a lot. He comes a lot to Lago di Garda, eh, Luke. <laughs> Half Italian. Yeah, Luke speaks very good Italian too, eh? No, no. <laughs> let's talk about your English. Okay, let's uh, get. Uh, okay, let me introduce you. We have. Um, uh, Luke uh, from uh, Zealand, from Holland, but uh, living a lot in Italy. We will uh, tell you know why. And we have Lillian the Goose, the Goose, yeah, uh, from Holland. Um, so let's start with the ladies first. Uh, Lillian, you live and train in Holland, or what is uh, where do you spend most time of the year? Uh, yeah, I live. I live in Holland. I I train a little bit in uh, in Holland, of course, but whole winter time we can train there. So then we will be. Yeah, uh, in Spain or whatever, Lanzarote, where we where the competitions are. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I lived in uh, Scheveningen. Yeah. And you did a little bit the same as Mattia that was sitting. You come from R6 and switched over to uh, to to IQ Foil. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how hard was it for you to to switch over? Was it a positive switch or is it? Uh, um, I mean, the guys obviously complained. The first thing was the weight. They had to put on some weight. Yeah. I would say the same actually. The weight was like hard because the R6 weight was quite light, uh, so I gained also uh, some kilos. <laughs> yeah. But um, and for women, I think it's a little bit more difficult than for men. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it was not easy. Um, but I really like the foiling. It's yeah. exciting, and um, I think it's a good switch from the R6. Okay, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. That's good. And Luke, you um, also. Uh, I mean, first of all, Luke, uh, how young are you still? I'm still 23. Yeah, little, uh, 23. And and Lillian, I know you're still young too. How? Uh, yeah, I just no, I just turned 31. Okay, but say uh, that's still young. But anyway, um, yeah, for sure. I mean, he's a kid still with 23. So so you're really coming from the very very beginning of the, of the falling, huh? Now, yeah, I mean, you uh, also, yeah, a little bit closer with the mic. I also okay. did R6. I yes, I remember that you started with the R6 when it was almost kind of finishing or uh, the cyclist. No, no, I was actually doing R6 for a long time, but I quit. Just before foiling was announced, like a year prior. Ah. Uh, because for me, being that light was impossible. <laughs> okay. So I, I was, but it was not possible to continue like that. And then I started foiling just for fun, and all of a sudden some competition showed up, and then I just kind of went for it, just as a joke, because I went studying, nothing too serious. And then I ended up winning the rolls, and then the ball kind of started rolling. Then obviously COVID hit. I was a little bit skeptical about the IQ for my for myself, and then I went for it, and it worked out really well. And now we're here in Brest, yeah, racing yeah. at the roads. Yeah. So um, actually, you know that uh, this morning uh, um, uh, when Kieran was here, he uh, you were in his list of the guys that might go to Marseille. You know, so uh, just to say you that yeah. uh, they they know that you are one of the guys that can uh, that can make the race for for Marseille. Um, so what is uh, what is key for you in in IQ foiling? So what is it? Uh, I mean, obviously, Kieran said it's the overall package. You know, uh, it's 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 about the fitness. It's about uh, it's about having a coach that also gives you some help, mental help, the equipment, everything. So for me, key in like doing good results, I guess, is speed. I think it's really important. Good tactics, and then yet to back it with physical well-being, I guess is really important. I think conditions are getting more and more important. We're working harder and harder on the boards, bumping more, which asks a lot from the body. So I think this is one of the things that everybody will be improving at. And this is key for me, but also a lot of tuning, like the gear. It's one design, but we can tune a lot with the shims and play and see where we can go. And the game is who goes the quickest. It's easier to race around the course. You have to do a little bit less tactics than the rest, so yeah. this is key. And uh, Lillian, for you, what is... Um, yeah, I think what, what Luke, of course, said... Uh, are I mean, like you already been a very successful sailor also in R6, and so you used, I think, to the pressure because you yeah. won a lot. Yeah. You got world champion titles, and yeah. you sailed on the PWA, so I think uh, it's really about about getting everything together. Yeah, and I think also mentally it's 
yeah, it helps a lot if you can handle the pressure. Also now with the new format compared to the R6, it's like if you're in the top 10, you can win a gold medal. So it's very important uh, to be mentally uh, yeah, easy and like that, that you uh, everything is on the last day. So so you know this place, Bres? You've been here before? Uh, yeah, I've been here. I've been here before. We had the Europeans on the R6 here and here I, I got actually my first uh, yeah top top six wrestled in the in the senior with the women's mm -hmm. so for me it was actually here the start of my career on air six yeah and and the conditions were tough or how was it yeah it was more light wind and very tricky also and i think like from tomorrow on we get like a very uh, windy week so uh, let's yeah. see but, yeah. Uh, yeah it's going to be it's <laughs> going to be a, a tough week yeah so uh, no it was a little bit different weather a little bit li sunnier less rain and like summer i think time Okay, and uh, look, um, I also uh, have to say that I saw there is a little bit this thing going around, all the heavier guys only go in high winds, but that is not true. I mean, I think that's uh, that's that's the nice thing about the foil. Once the thing is up, it's 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 going. So yeah, it's a it's a bit of a stigma to say yeah the heavier guys are not going the light winds, but I think I'm the happiest one. Uh, <laughs> Maybe yeah. there's a few heavier at the moment, but probably the top. And I think I kind of proved a few times already this year that I'm doing well in light winds. And I mean, I'm winning races in light wind slalom, so I don't see the problem in that at all. But I mean, it's definitely harder for a lighter person to do well in high winds than it is for them to do in light winds. But I don't, as soon as we're racing according to the rules, then the big boys are there too. And how key is the planning tech? Oh, yeah, this is one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it will be for now, not really. I think the planning tech is the p planning or foiling? Yeah, the foiling, the planning the foiling, tech on the foil. I, I think everybody does already the planning tech. Like, if you don't do that, you're out. <laughs> that was oh. the thing two years ago. Oh, shit, people are doing planning techs. And now we're like, oh, whoa, they're doing foiling techs. So I think planning tech is key. Everybody's doing them and everybody's <laughs> doing them well. And now we see people doing foil techs. And those are, I think, for me, the future. Yeah, the foiling techs, yeah, yes. For sure. And especially light wind racing, it saves you so much. Yeah. It's hard to do when it's really windy with the waves. I don't think many people will pull them off. But it, it pushes the boundaries down on how quick we get around the course in light winds. And mm. like you said, the heavier sailor, I think it's only to their benefit that we're doing foil tax now. Linen, and what about you? Did you try the the foiling tax, the planing? I know yeah. it's hard, but... <laughs> yeah, planing, yes, but like still foiling is uh, really hard. But um, yeah, we, we didn't focus on it yet because I still had a lot of things to do from uh, okay. from stepping over to the iPhone. But it's something you have in your plan in the future yeah, is definitely. to go over in because yeah. that might really make the difference in, 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 yeah. in the upwind. Yeah, to, I think it makes definitely to stay Maybe to explain to the people, uh, it's the tech where you actually stay on the on foil, the foil jump yeah. on the other side and continue planning. I've seen a few now when I was in Silver Plana during the youth, there is already youth that can do it. Yeah. They, they even have maybe the advantage. I think here when you're not so heavy, probably it's an advantage yeah. jumping around on the board. But uh, but still, it looks it looks great too. I mean, yeah, not it only that, it looks <laughs> great. But I think it will, yeah, when the levels is racing and, and that's what's happening, you can see more and more people are sending like the foiling okay. tape. So, um, Lilian, what are your expectations here in, in Brest? Um, now, for me, still, it's like a kind of a year where I don't want to put too much pressure for me because, like, next year's are my qualification for the Olympics. So, I hope I can I can be in the top 10 and then go and fight for the medals. So, yeah, and, that, and that was my goal. And who are your opponents in Holland, the one that's... Uh, um, yeah, yeah, you have a... Actually, I think one girl, Sarah Wennekes, he's also Sarah, sailing yeah, in the sure, in yeah. the Eichfoil. And for the rest, yeah, you have some youth uh, now who are joining. And um, yeah, let's see what their level are. But I hope, um, yeah, we can raise it in Holland for the youth. Yeah. And um, look, um, Nicolo was here and he said that he feels quite a difference between the salt water and the sweet water. You feel a little bit the same, like when you're on Lake Garda and then you train maybe back in Holland? or? Uh, yeah, for sure. Salt water has a little bit more power in the foil. It, the water is more dense, right, than uh, spring or natural water. Uh, so we feel this. I think it's interesting, but you also feel difference now with like, let's say, a clear seawater here compared to like a a more brown, sandy Dutch 
Oh. Sea water, it feels a little bit more grippy. Wow, interesting that yeah, you yeah. even feel the difference of the salt water. Yeah, the say. level is rising and we're feeling small differences now, so this is really exciting. Ah, okay. And um, so are you still, because I know that you've been studying fashion in Firenze yes. for many years. Are you finished with the study or you still hang no, around in Italy? Oh, you stopped. Yeah, I know, it's becoming too much. With all the racing we do and the traveling we do, it was demanding too much from both worlds and I had to pick, so okay. I picked for this. But is this something you keep open and maybe you want to finish it one day or you or you just said, okay... Ideally, after the Olympics, I would come back for uh, to finish my uh, fashion uh, studies. last year and get my diploma. Okay. Fashion so fashionology. So, uh, you, so you've always been? You like fashion? Yeah, I'm a big fan. It's, I think it's really interesting and uh, also the business around it, the marketing strategies. And it's a creative market, which I like. It's not... By the, yeah. by the rules, it's think outside of the book. So you give Lillian some tips sometimes how to ah, dress? Yeah, she needs some knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. You wear some interesting uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. I like to, <laughs> to wear something different. Yeah, then the rest be a little bit of unique, right? Okay, so so um, uh, okay, we know Lillian is based in Holland, and where are you based? Where 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 you call home? At the moment, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. No, so I just moved out of Italy this summer, and at the moment, I'm just fully traveling all the time, right? So I think I've been in Holland for a period of 10 days, and the rest I'm just everywhere and nowhere. And after this, yeah, I don't know. I have to kind of figure this out this winter. But we go to Aruba, we go three months to New Zealand. So. Okay, but is uh, the Dutch team, the woman and the man, training together, or is that separate? No, we're training separately. Okay. But in Aruba, sometimes we come... We train together, and sometimes in a year we split apart. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so I wish you guys uh, a really good week. Uh, maybe we will have no more time to spend some words because you guys are on the water all the time. And I will, uh, you know, that uh, the course will be right here in fr front of us, uh, and that will be the slalom course. Um, do you have a slight difference for uh, the slalom or the course racing, uh, Luke? Or I you? Don't. We'll go a little uh, for me personally, I think for slalom racing for me is easier to win, um, even though it's the lighter races. But I do like the course racing more. It's easier to play the man and make a bit of a gap in the results. Yeah. I am quite versatile. I like both. And Lilian, what about you? Are you more like see yourself to have the better results in, in the slalom or in, in the um, racing? No, the slalom is getting better also for me. Uh, but and exciting actually it's new if the, on the air shakes we didn't do it yeah. Um, but yeah I think I'm better in the course race because yeah, on the air shakes we did that all the time let's say that in slalom maybe you have less time to make up a mistake and racing maybe you can you yeah. have, if you make a small mistake you still can yeah. catch it up in slalom there's no forgiving yeah, you can't make a mistake in slalom like from the beginning you need to be on till the end of the race and then it's and yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, uh, that was just uh, one last question. Um, this morning, uh, Kieran also said that um, he doesn't really play a lot with the backwind uh, angle. He says it's uh, to together of the whole setup, you know, that has to feel comfortable. Do you play with the angle of the backwind, which is basically the only real change that you can make besides, you know, mass foot position or downhaul or whatever? Or you always keep the, the, the angle of the tail wing uh, about in the same angle? I play c quite a lot with it because, uh, yeah, obvious. I'm quite l a light girl, so yeah, yeah. I play a lot <laughs> with it. Like uh, if it, if it's, um, yeah, like strong winds, of course. Like I put like a different shim on it than uh, when it's like very light. Yeah. So I have to say I, I play a lot with it actually. Yeah. And yeah. you look, you play with the chims or not that much. So the chim, I remember, is the angle, the plates that you get. I mean the. The back wing angle is preset minus two. I know most of the people use plus zero five. That means that the minus 1.5 yeah. angle is the one that I know works most of the time. I know some guys told me, yeah, when it gets really windy, I can put the zero, and that means that it's a minus two. You have a little bit less drag, but on the other hand, then, you know, it, it's playing a little bit later, so it's always kind of to find the right balance. Yeah, I, I switch not that much. I switch in between two, and it's like. One for health conditions when it's really windy, and the other one is just always still 20 knots. So okay, so maybe it's better to be used to one setup rather than changing too much. For sure, because when you change the shim, the whole way the gear goes through the water and the whole way you have to stand changes. So if you keep on changing all the time, it's hard to get used to. It's better to get solid in one condition. Okay, and then wa lang, one last question. I know that um, you guys uh, sail a lot. You spend a lot of time in the water. You go through a lot of gear. How many sails uh, 
you change a year. I know, and then not even counting. I know that. I mean, we have to say that you guys really, really use the stuff a lot. So masts, you know, get less stiff. And uh, I mean, it's it's. But what what did what? How many sales? I think that Nicolo goes something like six sales a year or something. Yeah, well, it, it's a part of like getting new sales just they are broken or just looking for better performance all the time. I think we go through a lot. I think as a team, we probably reached 100 sales just <laughs> a week here and I. Oh, I wow. I, uh, we had 20 sales. Okay, that's uh, a lot. A lot. Lillian, but you also go through quite some sales? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she destroys it. <Yeah. laughs> no, but I have to say, like the seals are not great, so like the pressure is out of the seal uh, already very quick. So, yeah, okay. I think that um, I hope that we'll get better soon. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, maybe what Nico said, around uh, six to eight a year yeah. for one each person. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Well, then uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that's. Uh, let's hope that uh, I don't know maybe. They, but I mean, if they make them more solid, then they're more heavy, you know. So on the other side, that's maybe maybe they can try to change some materials. I don't know. It's yeah, maybe it's you're thinking changing like the a little bit the material that they yeah. can last a little bit like longer. Okay. That yeah. the pressure can stay a little bit longer. In yeah. uh, the stiffness actually is important. Yeah. But also do them put them through quite a. Oh yes. <laughs> a lot, right? Like I think the normal customer doesn't really have this issue. No, that. That's why I'm saying, I mean, uh, Nicolo said uh, in the average week, sometimes he goes sailing for 30 hours a week. That's like somebody that sails in a whole, uh, <laughs> in a whole yeah. year. So that, yeah. that's why I understand that. So it's, it's for sure. That's true. Yeah. Okay, guys, then, uh, yeah, I mean, I know that uh, the, the waiting game is not fun, but I think one day and then knowing that the focus is good is, is, still, is still okay. Yeah? So uh, we yeah. will, uh, I hope to see you guys performing nicely and well i wish you both good luck thank, thank you thank you for there's coming uh, Lillian. yeah there's a little spider i see that one <laughs> look he's coming down and <laughs> checking what's happening <laughs> yeah 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 uh, yeah there's a little, little spider <laughs> <laughs> little, little <laughs> spider spider man is coming down oh come on little spider okay yeah uh, oh there I you see the boys and uh, they're setting the course <laughs> no they're not setting well, the course the spiders here in brest yeah, I have yeah, a lot of spiders yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, the spider is, is <laughs> yeah. there on the on the on the oh, table. Yeah. Okay, uh, anyway, so so Luke, thank you, grazie, grazie. Un saluto a tutti gli italiani. Sì, ciao, ci vediamo presto, Lago di Garda. <laughs> okay, Lillian to all the Dutch, uh, uh, yeah. thank you well. Yeah, thank you well. <laughs> okay, okay, I I think uh, we were supposed to have another guest. I don't know where he is. Uh, if he's not there, then. Uh, I think we have a, fr a Spanish guest, and then we are done. Last guest coming. We have Mr. Lance coming. Come on, Mateo. Oh, okay. Here, here he is coming. Okay, so Mateo Sanz, come, come here. Have a sit, sit down. Mateo. Mateo, Mateo, Mateo. Okay, wait. Ah, uh, here we are. So, Mateo, uh, you are the coach of the Spanish female team. Yes. Correct. Okay. So, uh, my question is how many uh, uh, women can you coach in one time? How what is the maximum, or how many do you have? Well, it's not only, on, not only depending uh, on me. Uh, ah. We have uh, trials, so they need to perform and do a minimum requirement uh, results. Yes. So they can uh, come into the national team. Ah, so there has to be a requirement, then they come into the national yes. team. So how many do you have at the moment in the national team? Two. Ah, two. Okay. Yes. And um, I mean, you are the coach. What do you expect from them this world championship? I mean, how good are the chances for the two Spanish girls at the well, moment? Have, uh, right be now, realistic, you know. Different uh, level and let's say experience uh, with this uh, new class. Okay, uh, they're coming also from R6. Uh, yeah. Pilar, yes. Pilar, yes. Pilar, I know she's she's very good. Yes. Yeah, she's really good, and we come here. Well, let's say she has a, the goal. <laughs> yes. Me, but uh, at least uh, top uh, five. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. That's all. So, so really that, high. <laughs> yeah. 
And um, so, and, and where is the Spanish team based? Because before we talked a lot to the Italian, the Italians are obviously based in La Garda, yes. Ciuta Vecchia, the Dutch, they're doing a lot of work in Holland, you know, and where, where is the Spanish? Uh, we don't have a fixed place uh, okay. in Spain, so we try to move and train ah, a little bit okay. uh, in all the places. I would have thought like Cadiz or something would be a good place or something, but... Uh, well, it's not a bad place, so uh, <laughs> there's a high sports uh, center, okay. and uh, we spend their time in February, when yes. we have, uh, let's say, the Spanish uh, championship. Yeah. Also, there's uh, an IQ Games, but we go uh, two months in winter to Lanzarote. And you were also a, f a former competitor. You you performed in R6. Uh, yes. In, yes. And uh, um, so, uh, what? Uh, how important is it to 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 the girls? You give them more technical tips, more mental tips. Is it the mixture of everything? And uh, what what is? Uh, I think it's a mixture. Of things, uh, of course, on the water we work on the technical, tactical strategy, and also with equipment, the uh, testing, and everything. But outside, I also have a bit of experience from the past Olympic Games, uh, yes. pressure uh, in big events. So, which Olympic Games did you compete? In Rio and Tokyo. Ah, Rio and Tokyo, the yes. same as as Matia. So yes. you remember Matia? Yes, on yes, the, yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Matia <laughs> was very disappointed <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so, uh, but you decided then to stop. You didn't want to go yourself yes. in uh, IQ foil. Yes. I knew already well in advance because I was uh, in Silva Plana also yes. racing with the IQ foil. Yes, and it I'm was going to be hard for me. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I, rem I remember that. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so. Uh, we talked about it with other guys. We noticed that obviously in IQ foil the weight is bigger than it was in yeah. R6, and so you just said I want to be realistic and I want to. Uh, yeah. And and uh, you you want to uh, offer your experience to the Spanish uh, Federation. Yes. And when I have free time at home, I still sail on the IQ foil. I have one rig. Okay. Uh, okay. I you like see, obviously sail. you go for fun. That's yes, that's for sure. Okay. And is it interesting that actually the IQ foil is really the first equipment that people also buy? To go and out and have fun, you know, like nobody would have bought an R6 to go uh, in yes, the, on Sunday uh, to have. Uh, when uh, you are not worried about performing and you are not racing, maybe you don't need the best foil uh, in the world. And yeah. The starboard. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm not saying the uh, the IQ foil in, in itself, just the concept of having yeah. a foil and going out yes. and enjoy yourself yeah. and and. Uh, and and so you know um, this place here, Brest. You you sailed yes, here. Yes, I've been here. Uh, if I'm not wrong, in 2013, we had the European Championship in mm -hmm. R6. Ah, okay. So you could you can give a little bit of feedback to yes, your. Yes, I remember a little bit uh, about the racing okay. field. Okay. Um, and yeah, we talked about it uh, with the with the with the other teams that were here before. Uh, this place has two, let's say, things that are a little bit. Uh, is one you can have some current, yes. which. Nicola, for example, said it's not so important with the foil. You don't feel the current so much with the no, foil. It's not this, so much an issue. This week, especially, it's pretty light uh, strength. Okay. But for example, two weeks ago, it was uh, really. Exactly, but apparently we have a little bit of problem with the seaweeds. That can yeah, be a little bit more a problem. Yeah. That is for the. I think the worst thing for a foil is the seaweed. That will be one of the milestones this week to avoid yeah. the big seaweeds. B but uh, but anyway, I think that uh, this is. Uh, I mean, like uh, they said, you know, the seaweed. One time it goes with you, one time it goes against you. I mean, it's more or less the same for everybody. Okay, who do we have here? Tom Reveni. Ah, uh, Tom. Ah, uh, Tom. Yeah, come, Tom. Come join us with us, uh, Tom. You know him. So yeah, Tom. Yes. Yeah, we have. Uh, He's a competitor. Tom, I know him uh, because I see him sailing a uh, few times. He's, uh, he's also coming from the six. Yes, uh, Tom is coming from R6. So, Tom Ravini, welcome. Uh, you have to share the microphone. Okay, no problem. So, uh, yeah, well, so I split a little bit so I don't hammer uh, <laughs> Matteo at the whole time. So, Tom, uh, is this, uh, you've been to Brest also before? Yeah, I was here in 2014. And, uh, and you had a good experience? It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> but now we are lucky. We get a warm week. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Nice day. Hopefully the rest will also be nice too. But we've had some tough weeks here the last few weeks. Yeah. Lots of rain, cold. Okay. You um you also went to the Olympics? No, no, no okay. I missed out on the trials. But uh, but you uh, you said Aero 6 and uh, you are happy now. IQ foil is more dynamic. You feel more comfortable with it? Uh, it took me a, a bit of time to feel comfortable on the IQ foil. <laughs> I still feel scared sometimes on the downwinds and reaches. Yeah, I'm still not comfortable, I, 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 I would th say. I think you're not the only one. Might, <laughs> some people might not admit it, but I think it is pretty scary. Uh, yeah. Especially when you when you have 
the guts to put two feet in the strap and let the yeah, boat go. Exactly, you know, it's exactly. that, that is uh, is 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 that uh, that's good that we we touch this point. You know, because. Uh, uh, I still also argue for a little bit for fun and uh, obviously for me it's easy when I feel not comfortable I just pull the back foot out but the real difference makes to keep the two feet and let the boat go that in the in the speed it makes a difference yeah but I also think when you send it you have less power in the sail like that's, yes, uh, that's th a nice part uh, th if you go full full in then you actually yeah. have it's actually easier but once yeah. you fuck it up at the high speeds uh, yeah then the damage pretty, is bigger yeah yeah, yeah so exactly. it's like all in let's yeah, say yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly Sometimes it's hard to understand that, that the, the harder you Faster yeah. you go, then yeah. Easy. Yeah, but it it is actually quite impressive because, um, for example, uh, last year we had the the IQ fall, the um, the Europeans in Lake Silva Plan, and one day there was really shifty, gusty winds, so they decided to make a, a, a GPS contest, and a few guys, Nico. Okay, he won it. They touched like 33 knots, and that's impressive too, because a lot of people think, you know, oh, the foil is not fast or something, but like it was maybe 13 to 18 the wind, and he was going like 33 peak, and that is impressive how fast you can this uh, this equipment actually can go. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see Nico sail. Like he's phenomenal. <laughs> and so apparently last year I didn't even try. I knew I had no chance. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I still didn't know how to reach. I knew how to go upwind, downwind, but reaching yeah, wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I know that. That is the but. <laughs> He told me about the same thing. He said there's something like a sweet angle. When you hit that one, you can really let the boat go. The problem is that uh, either is to stop it, to call it back, or if the boat goes little upwind, then it shoots out like mm. a rocket. You know, so it's 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 the the, the foil is fun, but can be difficult to control in some yeah. in some yeah, conditions. Exactly. But um, and what is your uh, favorite wind conditions? What uh, what you would like best? You rather prefer the 20 plus knots, or you prefer the the, the 8 to 15? Uh, I don't have anything preferable. Like oh. I, I'm actually, I feel like I'm quite overall on the board. So I have don't have a wind that I'm amazing at, but I don't have wind that I'm bad yeah. at. That's what I feel. Yeah. Uh, maybe my competitors will say otherwise, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but I think it's it's really fun to sail in all the conditions. Like we do slalom in light winds. I like the pumping. I came from an RSX background, but I also love the strong wind, the high speeds, the adrenaline, the big waves. Yeah. I wish there would be some big waves here, though. That's well, I like the it. chances of big waves, unfortunately, <laughs> are not very big. And um, and what? Where is your training center? Where are you based? Uh, the Israel team. Where yeah, so we train in Sdotyam. It's a small town, I would say. It's called the Kibbutz. Uh, in it's quite north up in Israel. Uh, we have a beach. Good weather all year. Good conditions. Like it's very all round. So you can have offshore, sideshore, onshore waves, or flat, shifty. Like it's basically very all round. So, so it's, it's nice. a very good training camp for, and the whole team trains there, men and women. It's not really a training camp; it's a training base. Like a we, base. We, okay. I live there now, and most uh, of the team uh, lives okay. there. So it's basically that's that's where our life is at. Okay, that, that's cool. And and uh, Matteo, where do you uh, spend most of the time of your the year? Well, I'm most of the time on the Balearic Islands. Are uh, you living in the Balearic Islands? Yes. Okay. And they do some races there too. Yes. Well, we, you know, already we have the trophy, the Sofia. Yes, in, for sure, you know. In April. And that's a big event also, high level. Yeah. Many nations coming there. But the rest of the year we still have uh, good conditions. Okay, so uh, you would uh, also recommend the Balearis as a winter training, uh, 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 or no? Being honest, not really. Like no, in the no. winter months, it's pretty cold uh, sometimes, and the wind condition it's not so good. Okay, we needed a bit of. Uh, Let's say sunny conditions. But you say you're going to Lanzarote too. Yes. And Tom, you're going to Lanzarote as yes, well? Yes, I go. So, so this really seems to be like a fixed point now. Everybody that was here said, I'm going to go to Lanzarote and do this. This is uh, seems to be like a really good place for, to train. Because already the PW guys used to go in the last years, but it seems to be like a reference point for falling also Lanzarote now. Yeah, so I think the PW guys would go to Tenerife. Yeah, they will go to Tenerife. Yeah. Then I know that uh, Kurosh made a little bit something up also there, but yeah. I think now he's better doing with the foil. He's, uh, because yeah. I think Lanzarote is not as strong as uh, as, as uh, uh, the winds probably. And I think it's pretty, because I sailed there, it's kind of pretty bumpy. Yeah. It's not easy, but it's good for the foil. A good yeah, training. yeah, I think it's good. For board handling as well, like there is pretty big waves, and especially for me, which I was quite new on the fall, it was good for me to get uh, a lot of training in the hard conditions. And then when you come to a place like Brest or yeah. Silva Plana or Garda, it's suddenly very easy. Um, it's good wind most of the days, warm. 
Uh, and the fact that everybody's training together and every, you can see everyone in Sachi, I think a good thing for the sport and a good thing for me that I know that I can see I can see different views of how people train and what they do and then I think I improve that way. And uh, uh, Tom, beside you, how many are, let's say, in the mix to go to, to Marseille? So Olympics? Yes. Uh, right now we are 11 in the team. Oof, no, so. but like there is team A and B, but okay. 11 overall. Uh, but there is some really good guys and some uh, young guys coming up. So still a long time. Until Everything Marseille. is still open. It's too yeah. early to say yeah. there is a favorite or something. Yeah, there and is. also because there is, we are four guys coming from our sex who were really good in our sex. Yeah. And now where uh, some people take them more time to do the transition, sometimes it takes people it takes less time. Yeah. So I think it's you can't it's too early to say who. It's very interesting you say that on transition. Also Lilian said the same and it's like uh, it's not uh, you step from one boat to the other. It's really the whole <laughs> Yes, I know, I know. I, I always uh, I also saw now When I was at the youth, uh, Tamara, that uh, she she yeah. got the world champion. I mean, yeah. you ha have strong people uh, in in your team. Yeah, I think we have a really good youth system. Like that's yeah. our strong point. You can see on big techno, our sex youth. Like we were always in the medals and sometimes taking nearly all the medals. Yeah, which is amazing to see. Uh, mainly the young guys after me, they were incredible. I think we are struggling a bit right now with the whole transition. Uh, because we were very kind of, I would say, a light wind country, like yeah. in our sailing style. And now it's transitioning to foil and bigger people. Yeah. So I think it, it will take time to adjust for the country, but I am sure. But you're getting there. Like yeah, the federation the is doing The system works. Work. And yeah. so, okay. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, Matteo, I have another question for you. Um, I know very well also the Italian coaches and a lot of coaches. So uh, is uh, are you coaches also talking between each other a lot, exchanging experiences? Or is it, uh, I mean, oh, for sure there's secrets, but I see that there is some unity between the coaches. I mean... Yeah, sure. We, uh, well, in my point of view, it's that it's always useful to exchange uh, opinions and what they see, feelings, uh, always looking to improve. Yeah. And uh, so you um, you are coaching the female team. There is a separate uh, other Spanish yes. coach that is doing the men. Yes, there's another coach uh, for the men, Marcos, and then we have another coach here for the youth team. Ah, wow! So you, you so you have three. And how many Israeli coaches are here? Is is that about the same? You have a woman coach, and uh, I'm just interested how this works. Or is there maybe I don't know some smaller countries have just one coach for men and women, and uh, but you have also separate coaches. Uh, we have separate coach for men and women, but we also have uh, like secondary coaches. So we are six boys and I think eight or nine girls. So we have two coaches for each. Oh, okay. That's actually quite a bit. I mean, it's uh, so the coaching part is really important. Yeah, of course. You learn a lot from your coach, all the input and after the race, before the race, but mainly in training, I think coach is the most important. Yeah. Uh, and but they also give you some advice on nutrition and uh, and what other uh, uh, sports they should do. You tell that to your girls too, for example, or. I don't know, should they go biking, should they go, you know, uh, running, should they go in the gym? I mean, I think that's uh, not everybody. Well, they have their own uh, physical coach, uh, ah, okay. uh, also nutritionist, but I try to coordinate everything so it fits with the training we do on the water. Okay, so, but your team is fit for here? Yes. <laughs> And Tom, you feel good for here? Okay, good. That's that's uh, well. So uh, last question, obviously, Tom. What are your expectations for this event? I mean, realistic. I mean, I know it's. Uh, for example, obviously, Nicolo said top 10. Mattia was really realistic. He said top 30. <laughs> Uh, Luke, you know, he's also he said okay, top 10. They kind of stay, yeah. you know. Uh, um, well, my best result in the IQ4 uh, event, World of Europeans, was top six. So I would okay. like to improve that. Um, hopefully I can do that uh, I feel really good my training has been great the last few months yeah. and I won the coach regatta here so I'm coming like I do feel good on the board probably the best I've ever felt on a Nike full board but yeah. anything can happen on the water and uh, that's the whole nice thing about windsurfing is You never know. You never know what it's going to be like. It's not like swimming that Michael Phelps, you know, is going to win. Yeah, yeah. So for us, you maybe know Nico might win, but also there can be a massive shift. And he yeah, for sure, for sure. It's not... Uh 
I mean, for sure on the paper. So you think on the paper still, Nico is is the is the favorite, or well, Nico, Luke, they're both Luke, very yeah, so. talented and amazing sailors. I think they yeah. they're the favorites, but you know, week week long event. Yeah. It looks I haven't seen the forecast for the rest of the days, but it looks like well, it, it looks like the wind should start come tomorrow and picking up every day. But we know forecasts are forecasts. We are close to the Atlantic. Things yeah. change very fast. Yeah. Uh, we are actually in the Atlantic, so it's like. Uh, we, we will yeah. see, but it's going to be an interesting week. I mean, today I think it's nice just to people to give them some insight. Tomorrow we're definitely going to go. Um, uh, do you know if you are on this course or the other course tomorrow, I'm, the first day? I'm on course number one, which is okay, more which outside. the outer course. Okay, yeah. but then we will switch. So we, one day we will see you. So just for your okay. friends and uh, <laughs> and and I don't know who's watching you or that Tom will not probably if tomorrow we go with slalom, you will be on the other course. But then uh, we will always switch around. So obviously. You will be. We will see you on that course too. Uh, same with racing, but it, it, everybody will be seen on television. But yeah. we also remind them that we also have the website for the live trackers. Tomorrow we'll put it in in the underscore. They will see it. That you all guys have a tracker. They can see you in real time where you are in competition. So that makes it all very interesting. Okay, Tom. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Matteo thank you. also. Uh, thank, thank you, Matteo. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I wish you and your girls good luck. I wish you and your team good luck. And uh, and okay, oh okay, <laughs> so, okay we go, we go. Oh, I have a few questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's uh, so in um, in 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 Spain, uh, the the results, let's say the world, the the Olympic results have never been like very good. So it's it's uh, is it time now to show that Spanish can also do well? Sorry if I hit this. Uh, Talking uh, from my side or my work now with, yeah. uh, with the female. Uh, Pilar is uh, really strong, so okay. we need to keep on uh, going and improving. But she is clearly a top 10 uh, girl in the fleet. And Nicole also is uh, really good, especially in tactics, because she has more experience, I think, from the sailing in the NACRA. So you seriously think that uh, for the, in a year and a half for Marseille, you could really get her to the point that she will fight for the medals? Yes. That is really the goal to, to go for? Yes. Okay. And in the men's, it's looking a bit uh, not so good, because yeah, I know... I would say the level inside the fleet, it's more tight, so the difference is in really small details. Yeah. And... Uh, then we have guys like he said. Look, it's uh, really strong in uh, strong winds. Yeah. Then Nico, it's a pretty more uh, overall guy, but depends on the weather conditions. Yeah, but it's going to be interesting, especially for Nico if he say if he qualifies. Let's say most probably he does sailing in France with the French support. It's going to be you know probably that is uh, going to help him a lot. And then. Um, and how popular is still windsurfing overall in, in Israel? Because uh, I know that uh, we all obviously know Arnon Dagan. He's, yeah. let's say, a little bit the flagship of windsurfing for yeah. Israel. I think he's done a lot uh, for, first of all, because he's done amazing results. Yeah. And now he's done his own brand. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, guys like, uh, like, like Amado win races with his brand. Yeah. So, it's so, actually pretty nice so, to see. I... Exactly. And, and so, so it's actually he's been like a reference point for you guys. Guys, when when you guys maybe were younger, I mean, Anon is really kind of a little bit the flagship of windsurfing in uh, in Israel. Yeah, so actually, I was uh, when I was younger, I was sponsored more for wave sailing, but because I like to wave sail too, by uh, Arnon's uh, best friend, like the guy who basically grew him up, yeah. and I would sail with Arnon a lot, do some slalom as well. It was a pretty amazing experience for me. But uh, Arnon isn't, he's very famous in the windsurfing world in Israel, but not famous outside because PWA is not as widely known as the Olympic sport. Absolutely. So people like Gal Friedman, Shahar Tuberi are famous. Like I always get surprised, Gal won the gold medal in 2004. Yeah, So he was the first gold medal for Israel. Yeah. And I get surprised that you walk on the street with Gal and people recognize him. It's pretty amazing and ask for photos. Oh, is, like, is he still a superstar in still, Israel? S- still a superstar in Israel, yeah. So wow. it's pretty amazing. Uh, and it's actually pretty nice to see that we get a bit of recognition for the hard work we do. Well, I don't, but yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. Um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully I can get to his level. Cause and he's, is he uh, still doing something for the race now, his uh, Gal? I mean, he's uh, my coach. Uh, yeah, okay, so he, he definitely flipped uh, his experience and went into the... 
So and yeah. and and you you feel that he's giving you the, the the right support. I mean, he when you win a gold medal, you mean that you are you you know what you're doing. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. So you learn a lot from a gold medalist for sure. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can keep work together, and hopefully he can have a gold medal as a coach. So that's what Spain is missing a gold yeah. medal, and that is uh, <laughs> the the goal. You know, uh, Matteo, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> But I have to say that in Israel, uh, windsurfing uh, looks like a national sport. Like, yeah, uh, it's really well known. That, that yeah, that that is funny. I, I mean, Spain is also surrounded by water. I mean, Israel kind is, but it has less water. But still, everybody loves doing water sports. And and because you you said uh, you said wave sailing, uh, a lot of people think Israel is only flat water. But I seen, I remember that Arnon once organized something. It was been like a Red Bull. It was right like right amazing there. Amazing conditions, like three four meter high waves uh, and not not amazing, but yeah. Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, <laughs> it looked radical. I mean, yeah. uh, Israel can get super radical conditions yeah, also. We, we get big low pressure systems from the Mediterranean. It's not like the Atlantic, but it's you can get big waves. Um, and you could get, you can find some Kleist clean waves for wave riding, which is my favorite. Um, yeah. Sometimes so, it happens. So which are the spots are where, let's say, the best ones for in Israel? Which which? Uh... Uh, Bad Galim is probably the biggest spot we have. So that's where the storm rider was, and that's where we go for the big storms. But there is a uh, other really Arnon good spots. is also a center, I think, uh, in in somewhere on the he, coast. He uh, had a shop. He had a shop in uh, Bad Galim. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's where he was based, yeah. and uh, because I remember he was doing surfboards, a little bit everything. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Like okay, so he promotes generally the water sports. Um, yeah, and especially with Future Fly now, so he promotes also Israel in the windsurfing world, which is very nice to see. So, and what about uh, Mallorca? Eh? Yes. Mallorca is. Uh, I mean, I know it's water sports in general. Is there because I mean, is there also recreational windsurfers, wingers probably now? Yes, eh? it's. Uh, oh yeah, that's another uh, question. I know we shouldn't talk about it, but wing also wingers. winging got popular in 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 Israel. You see, you see some. Yeah, uh, it's plenty. It's getting yeah. big. So it's like the new kite surfing of 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So everybody's trying it now. But in Italy, it's the same. I mean, uh, I would say that 80 percent of the people that are winging are ex kiters because the logistics are so much easier in the summer. We have full beaches. It's a uh, nightmare. So it's uh, I, I don't think it's really taking away from windsurfing. It's more taking away from kiting. And then some windsurfers that maybe were not foilers before, they see an advantage in light winds. But otherwise, I mean, uh, I don't really think it's it's some kind of a threat for, for foiling windsurfing. It's too Hopefully not. Sport. Nah, I don't <laughs> think so. What about you? It, so you see also more 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 wingers down there in, yes. uh, in, in Spain? Yes, it's uh, pretty crowded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crowded. But, it's, uh, but did you try? Yes, I and have one set also. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, it's okay, it's okay. You don't have to hide. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, you, Tom, you tried also? Yeah, I've tried a few times, but and, yeah, I mean, still prefer I think, wave sailing. I think <laughs> if, if, you can, if you can foil, it's pretty easy. I also had to learn it because I coach it also. And uh, I think you have an advantage when you, when you are already uh, a good foiler. You only have to learn how the wing flies. But yeah. that is pretty, uh, I think, pretty easy for us to, to understand uh, yeah sure it's uh, I think the main part is the logistic that it's you can put it in one bag it's easy on the beach you have no lines no booms no things and so but anyway yeah but uh, for sure the the, the IQ falling is, is the is the Formula One there's voices already going around they say that it might probably uh, the kiting might probably get out uh, after uh, the first edition now in uh, in Marseille and that will be replaced by the winging uh, the good thing, and that is what I asked yesterday, uh, Gonzalo, mm, for the uh, for the IQ foil, we are secured for two cycles, and that is something also that makes you more motivated, also for you, yeah. to that we're not only working uh, for Marseille, for Paris, let's say, because Paris is the official, uh, but we're also working for Los Angeles, and I know it might sound far away, but if you have a really young rider, uh, 2028 is not that far away. Yeah, because this this Olympic campaign was pretty short, so in the end. Because we missed sailors, one year due yes, due to exactly. COVID, it got postponed exactly. And some sailors were already uh, on the IQ foil when uh, they others were still preparing for Tokyo. So and especially for the young sailors, they need more time to get ready for 2028. Yeah, so so definitely uh, even after the Olympics, uh, things will get continue to go, continue to grow, yeah. continue to get. Uh, 
because uh, then because we should also remind that now uh, fifty percent of the Olympic glasses are on foil, so foil is really the makes makes it more spectacular. I mean, uh, I also understand that that R6 for sure from a technical point of view it was great and everything, but you have to admit when you see b boats going with five knots of speed, it's not as exciting yeah, yeah. as when you see foils uh, flying around in uh, twenty five knots going upwind when it's blowing ten knots. You know that's a different uh, action. You know for yeah. the eye. Something fast is easier to sell to the media. Uh, exactly. Something fast is it to sell for the media and and there is plenty of other boats classes in in the olympics that have foils and and that's why it's it's uh, for sure the, the foil is the future you know uh, what what gave us in italy a lot of uh, attention to the foil it's a paradox but it's the america's cup you know the the prada the because the people were understanding what foil is you know it's a different type of foil because you know it's not like our foil under they have but but it people understood that something that is going on foil yeah. can go very fast can go very fast in light wind so that was actually quite an advantage for us for the sport of foiling to give people to understand what uh, what 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 foiling is uh, yeah so uh, let's uh, um, is there any particular tips you give to your athletes like uh, uh, go to bed early no alcohol in the evening or you leave up uh, to them well, luckily, uh, they know already all these tips. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they are professional, you know. Okay, so okay. But there's no party here anyway, no. so that that we can be, <laughs> we can, we can, uh, we can be, uh, we can be very relaxed and. Uh, yeah, it's it's all up to the wind, and then we have plenty of action. Um, yeah, tomorrow the forecast is. Uh, I, like I, we already. Yeah, I, I looked. I, I looked. I looked. Uh, I I mean I look, looked at the forecast. Forecast and forecast, but tomorrow we should get, which is <laughs> really the people here are laughing that we should get southeast, which is a very rare direction. They say we we get it like three times a year, and we are getting it all this year. It's it's it, it's super 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 rare. And we, we are supposed to get this direction tomorrow. The, the, the wind guru says even around 20 plus knots in the afternoon. So, uh, we will see. We will, we will, apparently we get a pretty big low pressure on the weekend that should deliver the southwest wind, which is the, the wind that we had last night and it was really windy, yeah, was windy, which is the predominant wind when the low pressures are coming. And that one should really shoot on Friday and Saturday, I saw. So, um, it, there is a possibility we might see some medal races in super strong winds. Strong wind. So, Tom, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, guys. I think uh, we are. <laughs> so, tomorrow we will um, tune in as soon as we have competition. Um, ah, let's tell you something funny. We will never be able to race at nine o'clock in the morning because it's still dark. It's funny, huh? It's, uh, it is, uh, this morning I woke up at 30 and it was totally black still, yeah. you know, and it's, uh, you have to get used to it. I mean, uh, uh, it's dark until it's light until eight in the evening or eight thirty. Still, even the summer is over. Uh, yeah. We are in autumn um, because uh, you know that this region is so far out in the Atlantic that they even thought that they would make a time zone here because this area should have actually one hour less. Yeah. But they said in France they don't want to have different time zones, so they kept it. Yeah. But indeed, it's it's really strange that uh, you see only some light at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So so we never would be able to race before 10. That's not realistic because it's dark. So uh, we obviously tomorrow, as soon as we tune in, I believe tomorrow we'll have the skipper's meeting probably around 10 again. I mean, today was the first day. First possible start was 12. I might Tomorrow might be even earlier yeah. if it's yeah, windy. It's so I think from 10.30, 11 on max, uh, stay tuned because uh, we might... Uh, see some action on the water. So thanks again to, <laughs> I was already sending you, but now this time it's okay. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Matteo. And uh, I see you guys uh, on the water and I hope I make you some nice comments thank about you. you. Thank you. Fingers crossed for tomorrow. Yeah, thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to everybody. Ciao, ciao. And uh, tomorrow with some action on the water. Eh? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>